Hi, this is Daniel and you're watching Unrivaled Investing. It's been an absolutely wild week, particularly for regional bank stocks that in some cases have posted record volatility. Now, some folks are looking at this volatility and they're thinking, hey, this is a potential opportunity, especially because the valuations in some cases are very low. So some folks are thinking, hey, maybe there's several hundred percent upside especially because some of these regional bank stocks have lost 70, 80, 90% of their value. So in this video, I wanted to share some of my considerations that you should think about before you potentially pull that trigger, before you say, hey, I'm making this huge bet on XYZ regional, you know, regional bank stock. But let's first understand sort of the broader environment. What's going on here? First of all, you have just at the start of this week, you have the regional bank First Republic being acquired by JP Morgan. This was a distressed sale, you know, as you had depositors quickly fleeing First Republic. Then as if nothing were happening, you had Jerome Powell with the Federal Reserve. He's showing his resolve. He's saying, I will stomp inflation. We will get inflation back to that 2%. So he continues to raise the Fed fund rates to, to pull back, to try to do what it takes with monetary tightening, squeezing the system, pulling back on demand to make sure that inflation gets under control. So now Fed fund rates around five, five and a quarter percent. And then, you know, it's, it's almost shocking, you know, at the press conference with Jerome Powell, he's effectively saying, hey, there's no problem in the financial system. And then the next day, you know, Wall Street's like, uh, -uh there is a problem because you see all these regional bank stocks declining significantly led by PacWest. PACW is the ticker that dropped 50 percent. You know, the day after Jerome Powell saying there's no problem, but it wasn't this wasn't the only bank. There were others like Western Alliance and Zions that were also dropping significantly. PacWest was just leading the way. And then fast forward 24 hours later, PacWest and several other regional stocks are jumping higher. PacWest is up 70 percent plus on Friday, still down significantly for the week in the last few months. But this is just such a super important lesson. Aside from even thinking about the banks, this is this goes back to Warren Buffett and Ben Graham, you know, the intelligent investor, the book that Ben Graham wrote, which is that Mr. Market or Mrs. Market, however you want to think about it, the market is a manic environment. You know, one day it's down 50%, the next day it's up 70%. Now it didn't claw back all of those losses, but it does show you that you're going to have tremendous volatility with prices and you need to recognize, and this is the lesson from Ben Graham, is that when you have this volatility, this isn't the market not telling you what something's worth. You're not supposed to take it and go, oh, okay, this is now the value of the business. What you're supposed to do, the, the intelligent investor is supposed to do is say, hey, Mr. Market, you are here to serve me. I know the value of this and you're just going to you know, give me random quotes. Sometimes it's going to be high. Sometimes it's going to be low. And when it's low, I'm going to say, I'm very interested in buying because I know the value is really over here. Even if you're the quotational value is down here. So Mr. Market is here to serve you. That is such an important lesson, especially when you look at these regional banks, it's very clear. A lot of folks are wondering what is the value for things, especially as they have such tremendous volatility. Now let's look at PAC West you know, PACW is a ticker, just a high level to understand this business model. So, you know, you take in deposits, you know, people deposit money with you. They pay out on average for their deposits around 2%. Last year is closer to 0%. They then reinvest that across various different asset assets, commercial mortgages, residential mortgages, construction loans, and they get around 5%. This is blended for their portfolio blended assets around 5% and they get deposits around 2%. That's that's the basic model for most banks is you take in deposits and then you re you know reinvest it you offer loans to the community and you get a spread off of your deposit cost. That's really the basis of it. The key challenge is that cash now yields so much more. I personally keep my cash at interactive brokers. There's a link below. But you know, no matter what choice you have, there's cash now yielding, you know, four and a half percent, between four, four and a half percent. And that is a real challenge when you're talking about banking institutions that are have deposit rates that are closer to two percent. And that is that is the key challenge I keep personally running into when I'm thinking about these banks. So they're saying, well, how does this play out? Because their their deposit costs, it's rapidly going up. And if they don't match what you can get in other areas, whether or not it's a money market fund or cash with various different institutions, you know, that's closer yielding double what you can get in some of these bank deposits. 
why are they going to be able to hold on to those deposits? And that's the challenge they continue to face. And you can see that has played out for PacWest, you know, over the last few quarters, you know, uh, just a year ago, their non-interest bearing deposits, i.e. deposits that weren't paying anything were $14 billion. Now it's $10 billion. Interest bearing deposits, that sort of struggled. You know, it's, it's, it's roughly flat down a little bit slightly in the most recent quarter. And so they're saying, okay, well, as we've lost a lot of these, you know, non-interest bearing deposits, well, we've needed to borrow elsewhere just to deal with these outflows. So they've been borrowing from the Federal Reserve and various different programs. So you can see a huge surge in borrowing in the most recent quarter. This is the challenge that you're seeing a lot with a lot of these institutions. We are in a different environment and Jerome Powell continues to make it tougher for these banks by raising the Fed funds rate. You know, that's effectively, you know, short term treasuries are yielding that much higher, you know, versus what you could be getting with, you know, these bank deposits. And then then that doesn't even consider the aspect that a lot of these banks, you know, for, for Pac West, it's something like 20, 30 percent of their loans, excuse me, 20 to 30 percent of their deposits are, you know, non-insured or above that in the FDIC, the government insurance level of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So that's an additional consideration of like, oh, my goodness, I'm actually taking bank risk here. If my deposit is actually above that two hundred fifty thousand dollars, then I'm taking risk of, well, what happens if Pac West gets in trouble? So that is, you know, a key consideration, you know, as you're looking at it. And I'd argue it's even worse now because even, even if you don't have your cash, let's say at Interactive Brokers and you, you have it at a money market fund or you have it at, with your Apple card, you know, Apple has made it very easy not only to have a high yield you know, cash savings account, but they've made it so easy. And there's there's a plethora of different apps that do this to make it easy to transfer funds. We are in a whole new era, you know, for with mobility. So it's so much easier to transfer funds. Say, hey, I'm not happy to have my funds and account, my deposits here with this small regional bank. I want to move it to the Apple account that's yielding 4% plus. It's not as good as Interactive Brokers, but, you know, it's still much better than what you could be getting with one of those regional banks, you know, that's closer to 2%. In some cases, it's even lower than that. Some of the mega banks have much lower deposits. And so that's a real challenge. Now, some people say, well, you got to understand the opportunity, Daniel, because the valuation for these banks have gotten crushed. PacWest now trading around 0 0.2, 0 0.3 times book value, depending on the day or the hour. Now, the way to think about this is traditionally banks are valued based on their book value. And people say, hey, what's your return on equity over time? And so if you have, let's say, a positive return on equity, 5, 10, 15% over time, and PacWest has very reasonable return on equity, then you might say, well, then this business should be around one times book value, or maybe even a premium to book value. Maybe it's somewhere between one and one and a half times. And you can see that's where it was valued. Now, even fairly recently between one and one and a half times. I wouldn't necessarily even say that that was an outrageous valuation if the bank environment were stable, but it's a very different environment now with Fed funds rate going up significantly and cash yielding so much more. But this is why some folks might be looking at PacWest and other banks and saying, hey, this is a real opportunity for hundreds of percent upside because if it survives and it gets back to one times book value like is traditional for many banks and it this bank you know thrives over time and that's the big question mark does it thrive over time does it survive then you could see several hundred percent higher that's that's the crux behind some of the folks getting excited to potentially buy some of these things now first of all in full disclosure this is not financial advice you know, as you wonder, where does this potentially go? And first, a quick plug. I recently started buying a stock that I think is over 300% upside that I called out to my subscribers at unrivaledinvesting.com. I also expect to raise prices soon. So now's the time to act if you'd like to lock in a favorable rate and take charge of your investment journey. When I consider PacWest in various different regional bank stocks, for the most part, I put it in the too hard pile. And the reason why comes back down to that uncertainty of how does their deposit base change over time? How does their assets change over time, especially when they have such strong outflows because interest rates are so much higher for various different cash products. And so until there's a real strong sense that these financial institutions are stable, that you don't have to worry about this huge differential between what you can get in cash elsewhere, that four, four and a half percent versus the two percent that you're getting with some of these banks and that you could continue to have outflows, continue to have asset sales. You know, when when you have the, the deposit outflows and you have the asset sales that directly impacts the long term earnings power of the bank. And so as long as that 
headwind exists. For me personally, it's too hard even recognizing that the, that these banks, many of these banks trade at significant discounts to book value and that arguably if they survive, there's tremendous upside. But that's that's the first concern. So huge upside if they survive, but that's a big if. The second aspect is you need to understand deposit flows and how that fares over time. You know, the smoother and more stable the deposits, the safer the bank. But if you have a situation where a lot of pot depositors are waking up and saying, hey, I want to get paid, that does create a challenge. The third key aspect and one that you need to consider for any bank is understanding the credit risk is management. And this is usually where the banks blow up. This is the risk that blew up a lot of banks with the great financial crisis. It wasn't what you saw here, which is, you know, duration problems and deposit problems. What you saw in the great financial crisis was mostly credit problems. And we haven't even looked into that with PacWest here or the regional banks that you, you know, you might be considering is you need to understand what's the credit quality is management, you know, doing smart loans. Are they underwriting conservative loans? What's the loan to value and has the value for some of these properties drop significantly? Are these loans very safe loans? Are they cash flowing? How much are they reserving against these loans in the event of a recession? I strongly suspect so far, you know, we've, we're going to see the banking crisis in various different legs. You know, we had a very fast period where folks were worried about their uninsured deposits. You had huge losses from duration related bets with Silicon Valley, you know, bank making these huge, you know, multi decade long bets that, you know, lost a lot of value in the short term, uh, because interest rates moved higher. And I think the next leg of the banking crisis is when you start seeing an economic turnover, where you're going to start seeing more credit losses. And so that's the next picture that you have to understand and assess, you know, after you get comfortable with the deposit you know, and the deposit flows for the bank. So I'm not comfortable with most of these banks just with that first challenge. And so then after that, you need to start digging into, hey, is there some other risk here that's going to blow me up where maybe they were doing some poor underwriting? So those are just, I would say, some of the key things that you need to consider when you're looking at some of these regional bank stocks. Maybe it works out for you. And if you have, if you have a major bet, you know, on one of these companies or PacWest, I'd love to hear your thoughts below uh, and, and, you know, various different considerations. Personally, it's too hard for me now you know, does, does that mean it, 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 it could potentially go up several hundred percent? Maybe it does, but I personally want to, you know, sleep well at night and focus on the things that I could say, okay, I'm, I'm much more confident in this other position that I call out to my subscribers where I go, okay, this has a huge cash balance and it's growing or this other business that's growing super fast and trades at cheap multiple. So I'd rather look at things that I can just sleep well at night versus the uncertainty of, Hey, there's, there's, this structural problem because your deposit base cost is so much, you know, the, the amount you pay on your deposits are so much lower than what customers can get on cash. You know, that, that would just bother me every day thinking about that. But, for, but for some investors, maybe it'll work out and it's just too hard for me right now. If you have a different view, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Thanks so much for tuning into unrivaled investing.